Catherine Brushton with you in Ecolis Coin News. We continue to speak about blockchain technology safety. Digital exchange is not means safe exchange. So if you won't send anything to anyone anywhere, is not protect for sure. Your information exchanged on your so-called private internet corporated network is private just partly. And how the situation is possible to be changed? We ask about it our guest. Meet CEO of P2P Solutions Foundation, Mr. Jamil Sheriff. Meet Jamil A. Sharif, the co-founder, president and CEO of Electronic Learning Incorporated and Innovative Solutions International Incorporated. Jamil Sharif graduated from European and American educational institutions, the degrees of Bachelor's in Management and MBA awarded with highest honors and awards of summa cum laude. Also, Jamil has many diplomas from Stanford Engineering in Information Technology and in Security. He managed to study under the guidance of famous professors Dan Bonnet and Neil Dashwani. For more than eight years, he has been leading a strong team of Innovative Solutions International Incorporated, whose goal is to contribute to the global decentralized platform of secure, interference-free peer-to-peer communication systems. Now that Unix system is brought to the blockchain through the P2P Solutions Foundation he hits. From personal achievements, Jamil has vast experience and is involved in volunteer activities. He knows eight languages. In his spare time, he conducts courses of cryptography and blockchain. Jamil's hobbies include traveling and adventure spots such as tracking and camping. Hello, Jamil. Nice to meet you in the College Coin U Studio. Hi, Catherine. And hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me and having me over. You plan to bring users a system through which they can exchange confidential digital assets or files with absolutely no interference from any third party, not even an administrator. In which way, how it works, P2PS idea? So you may be aware that anything that you exchange today digitally with anyone, anywhere, is not private by any privacy standards, including information that you exchange on your own private intranet corporate networks. P2PS is a pure peer-to-peer -peer platform which safeguards, for example, your medical data, your medical records, banking information, and all other sensitive digital assets. Anytime you want to exchange anything between two parties, that's what P2PS does. Such platforms today are simply non-existent. Let me give you an example. Let's talk about the private intranet networks. The systems administrator or network administrator has access to your files that you send to another person within the same network. By extension, every single network that you use anywhere uses the same principle. And even before your targeted recipient, the point B, has received your digital data, someone else has already accessed it or maybe even viewed it before you, your sent message has reached the recipient's inbox or system, the device, whatever you have. And when we talk about storing or exchanging information outside of our private intranets, then anything that can be stored by a third-party service provider doesn't matter where it's stored in a data center even if it's you know present on the space even if that data center is in the space still it has a third-party interference or intervention it's not private by any private privacy standards isn't it in which areas of practice will it be applied? So, there are many use cases. One such use case is within the banking institutions where you find lockdown systems, but sensitive data that needs to be exchanged. Another example is in the government establishments and also in the medical facilities. The doctor-client privileged information, for example, 
that the doctor uses or refuses to share with the patient's parents in most cases is then emailed to the patient, you know, on an open network. An email, as we all know, is exchange of that data going through so many servers and ISPs and what have you. So obviously it's not private anymore, right? Since every ISP or server that the email has passed through has a copy of that sensitive private information. Take for example the content publishers who are facing a huge problem today. That's such a sensitive issue to the publishers because of the copyright you know, matters involved in uh, the exchange of that information. Okay, The content publishers who are facing this huge problem, all that they're trying to do is protect their copyrighted content which took years for them to produce. So whether you talk about Pearson or Houghton Mifflin or any other publisher in the world, they all encounter the same situation with their digital content. P2PS was created not yesterday. Tell us please about your long creation way. So it all started back in 2010 when we were exploring solutions to sending copyrighted material from educational publishers over to the lockdown computer devices used by the educational system which was developed by one of our companies, Electronic Learning Inc. At that point in time, we did not find any viable and effective solution on the global level that could send such information, sensitive information of course because it's copyright protected, from one device to another or even several devices without having a copy of that transmission saved on the servers. Now that's that was a big challenge for us. That triggered the process of exploring possibilities of developing our own system. And one thing led to another. And we started the research and development process and developed our own proprietary push system. We named it push system at that point in time. Then we went to the banks. And in talking to the fintech professionals, what we discovered was that they too were facing similar challenges since predominantly all banks, all of them, use lockdown systems where the end users are not even allowed to use any kind of a USB flash drive or CD or DVD drives, nothing. After that, we researched the government establishments and medical facilities it was a long process trying to determine our target market segments. It wasn't easy. I mean, when we are talking about using a system which is being developed and then you are having a research and development process going on in trying to build that system, making it strong, secure, interference free, it was a big challenge. Almost everyone trying to exchange sensitive digital information were facing similar challenges. And that prompted us to undertake further research related to the market size. The results were mind-boggling. We found that only from 49 countries, we have a target available market of about 1.5 billion end users, out of which the serviceable obtainable market is about 772 million end users. That was a big enough number for us to start the ball rolling and subsequently build a system that's easy to use and intuitive to the habits of the end users. So here we are with a fully functional product ready to be integrated on the blockchain to make it even more efficient for all stakeholders. Why did you choose ERC20? So ERC20, as you may be aware, First of all, the ERC. What, what is ERC? It's Ethereum Request for Comments. And there are essentially two types. The ERC20 and there is the ERC23. The ERC20 standard was developed back in 2015. 
and it has been extensively used, tested, and it, it kind of makes it, you know, easy to transfer between users and platforms. Since our token is a smart contract system, which is built on the Ethereum blockchain, it uses the ERC20 standard. It is seamlessly transferable between users and platforms using the ERC20 compatible wallets. You're on the ICO ending stage. The next step is the blockchain integration. What does it mean? Why will you do it and for what? Tell us detail, please. So data security is extremely important to everyone, whether government establishments or corporate institutions. For that matter, even individuals. Look around you and you will see so many credit card frauds, hacking of bank accounts, hacking of crypto wallets and even exchanges. The biggest challenge encountered today is transferring sensitive digital information and assets from point A to point B without any other person having any kind of access to it in between. So. One of the biggest advantages through blockchain integration is the perpetual record of transactions and streamlining financial actions into efficient and highly secure processes. We have endeavored to put the system on the blockchain which has tremendous advantages to all stakeholders. As we all know today, moving away from a centralized to a decentralized system has greater advantages in terms of time and cost savings. Initially, it may take some time, efforts, as well as, you know, financial commitments, resources in order to transition to the decentralized blockchain system. It's a challenge. But once this important step is accomplished, it becomes so much more cost effective for all stakeholders, whether they are institutions or individual end users. Sounds great. What in the future do you see for P2PS tokens? What's the profit in this for our viewers? The future for P2PS tokens is very bright, in my opinion, with a serviceable obtainable market of over 770 million and a total supply of only 100 million tokens. We see a huge demand for our P2PS tokens in due course of time going forward, especially when we have launched the platform on the blockchain. I would not be able to predict the profits for your viewers. One of the reasons is because we keep away from speculating. However, since the P2PS tokens are the only way anyone wanting to use the secure interference-free platform can access it. Anyone who buys the tokens at this early stage will eventually have the opportunity to transfer them to people in need of the tokens. And that may provide them with some kind of a benefit. Yeah. So let us look at it this way. Today, everything is transitioning to digital transactions whether it is e-commerce, banking, or even ownership of real estate property and everything that you could possibly think of. Unfortunately, there is no other system that offers you the security that you need through a peer-to-peer -peer network in order to exchange sensitive digital data. Therefore, we anticipate a huge demand once the proliferation of the platform happens and it is accepted in several countries and we are targeting 49. The only way for you to procure our tokens when such a need for you arises is through the public exchanges at that point in time because we would have obviously finished our ICO by then and uh, so all the tokens will be on the public exchanges where the demand will inevitably drive the price up. I mean, there, there is going to be a short supply. That's for, that, that's what I assume. So it's a, it's a natural phenomenon. What about exchanges? Yeah. 
So we are already approved by a few modern and secure exchanges for listing our tokens. Since some of the exchanges were recently hacked, back in December you had a lot of such reports. We do not want to commit the same mistakes as some others. And of course, we have le learned from them as well. So we are taking our own kind of precautions, if you may. We are not in a hurry to list our tokens, except when we have solid assurance from exchanges that they have taken adequate precautions against being hacked. And for ants, would you like to add something about your team? Yeah, sure. It will be my pleasure. So we have a highly motivated and diverse team with a strong multicultural and multinational background whose goal is to make a real difference in the global, decentralized, secure and interference-free peer-to-peer communication systems platform. Although every single team member and staff is extremely important to us, we are very proud to have industry and tech leaders as part of our team. Since we may not have enough time to talk about all of our staff and colleagues, I'll mention some of our notable team members who constitute part of our multicultural and multinational team. First off, Mr. David Drake, who is the director on our advisory board. David was born in Sweden and he is the founder and chairman of LDJ Capital that is headquartered in New York. LDJ today has over 50 global directors and family office partners with $1.5 trillion in managed assets. Next, Mr. Ken Tachibana. He is ethnically from Japan and he is the founder of Intelligence Capital and is associated with the ICO of things for a long time now. Ken is both a technical as well as a finance specialist. He has a bachelor's and master's in computer science from University of California in Berkeley and Stanford. And then Ken also has master's in economics from Stanford. And as if that wasn't enough, he also completed his MBA in finance from UC Berkeley. Then Mr. Ian Scarf, who is a business ambassador, blockchain consultant, strategist, as well as an advisor. Ian is a serial entrepreneur, investor, consultant, and he's got those valuable insights into every working aspect of organizations you can possibly think of. Ian specializes in blockchain and ICO advisory. Not many people may be aware, but Ian is ranked number two as an ICO expert on ICO Bench. I mean, ICO Bench is a world-renowned ICO rating agency. Then, of course, uh, Mike Shokin who is a chartered financial analyst with expertise in corporate finance, Bitcoin, and blockchain derivatives. Mike is an equity research analyst at ING Bearings, and he also teaches at NYU. Mike has advanced degrees in fin finance from Baruch College, New York, and SOAS, London. Then, of course, we have uh, Dr. Walid Alareni, who's a technologist. He's got his bachelor's and master's in computer science. And then he holds a PhD in uh, computer science engineering from Reading University, UK. Dr. Walid has extensive experience in telecommunication, IT, and his expertise includes the voice, the data network designing and implementation, along with information and telecom security. And again, Sean Kurtz, he's a fintech solution architect and marketing specialist. Sean Kurtz is the founder of Cloud Network and XWS. He is recognized, and of course, he's a recognized entrepreneur. Sean, incidentally, completed his Bachelor's of Science in Software Engineering with Magna Cum Laude in Blockchain Major from Florida Atlantic back in 2009. 
right after which the blockchain started off in the same year. Sean Kurtz has been associated with blockchain ever since. Similarly, we have uh, Sean Brizendine, who has been associated with blockchain from its very early days. Sean Brizendine is a blockchain specialist who has been associated with several successfully funded ICOs. I mean, we communicate almost on a daily basis. So, we have several other members, but let me wrap up with just one more notable team member, Jatinder Kumar. He is our marketing manager and uh, with a strong technical as well as business administration background. Jatinder is ethnically from India and he has a Bachelor of Engineering as well as an MBA to his credit. It was great interview. Thank you, Jamel. We hope you'll bring good solutions, catch the big success with P2PS ICO. Yeah, my team and I are excited and eagerly looking forward to it. Thank you for your time. It was Jamil Sharif, P2PS Solutions Foundation CEO in Carlos Coney Studio. Stay with us.